All right, looks like we are good to go here. We got a live healthy stream for the internet, so we should be ready to rock and roll. All right, so I'm Jeremy Bernanski. Thank you guys so much for your patience today. I know we've had a lot of technical issues today, but I believe we've got them sorted out. Fingers crossed. So if you follow on Twitter, you know that we had uh, some technical issues as far as the internet is concerned. The internet kept dropping and freezing here. So something completely out of my control. So I apologize, but thank you guys so much for your patience. We are ready to get this episode started for this week's brand new episode. But before we do that, we'll give everybody a second to log in because again, uh, it's 1130 here. So we're over an hour late today because of the internet issues and technical difficulties there. Uh, so we'll give everybody a second and then we will be rocking and rolling. So we'll be right back. We're back. I'm Jeremy Bernanski. This is Bernanski's vlog. Thank you again to everybody who's watching. We did have a lot of issues this morning as far as the internet is concerned, but it looks like we are up and running. We've got a good, healthy feed here for the internet, so we should be good to go without any further complications. So with today's episode, before we jump right into everything, let me go ahead and just remind everybody, every Monday at 10 a.m. PST, we have a brand new episode that drops here on YouTube. So you're going to want to make sure you click that subscribe button and then also hit the bell so you get the notifications as soon as new content drops on the channel. Also, if at any time during the show you enjoy any portion of the show, go ahead and give me the thumbs up because the thumbs up helps people who like movie related shows find this movie related show right here on YouTube. Now, we have a lot to cover today. We've got some news stories. We have two movie reviews for Beirut and Rampage. Then we're going to jump into what's arriving in theaters, what's arriving on DVD and Blu-ray for your home theater, and finally, Certified Rad. But before we do all of that, we are going to jump into the weekend box office to see what that looks like and to see what everybody was watching. I just told you guys what I saw, Rampage and Beirut. So let's go ahead and take a look at now what everybody else was watching this weekend. All right, so we have the news here for this weekend coming in in the top five. We have Blockers coming in at number five at 10,295,000. We have Ready Player One coming in at number four at 11,205,000. Truth or Dare is number three at 19,080,000. A Quiet Place at 32,600,000. And Rampage coming in in the number one spot, crushing and dominating at 34,500,000. So great job to Rampage. Uh, to be honest, after having seen Rampage, I am a little surprised uh, that it beat A Quiet Place because I do believe A Quiet Place is a better overall film as far as story, character development, everything else goes. Rampage is a popcorn, popcorn fun, good time, right? And you're going to hear in my review a little bit later in the show what my exact thoughts were on Rampage, but it really epitomizes the whole movies for guys who like movies. That whole slogan that's this film. Like, you can go shut off your brain and just have a good time watching just monsters destroy downtown Chicago, basically. Uh, so stay tuned for my review on that. But Quiet Place, my review is also on the channel. If you go to the movie review playlist, you can see my thoughts on A Quiet Place. I really enjoyed it. Happy to see that it's in the top five. Truth or Dare, uh, I did not see that, but it hasn't really been getting strong positive word of mouth online. So I am surprised to see that it made the top five considering uh, some of the things I've seen as far as what people thought about the film that saw it. But hey, good job for everybody who enjoys that type of film, getting out and supporting their genre. Ready Player One, not really surprised that's in the top five. I figured that would coast the top five, at least until Avengers Infinity War. Uh, and then Blockers, again, haven't seen it yet, but it's been getting really good word of mouth, really positive buzz as far as uh, the people who did see it. Really funny comedy. So job well to everybody involved with Blockers and keeping that in the top five, plus everybody who went out and saw it and supported the film. So nice work for you as well. In the top 10, we have Chappaquiddick, uh, Tyler Perry's Acrimony, I Can Only Imagine, Isle of Dogs, and Black Panther. Black Panther still in the top 10, and it looks like it is going to remain in the top 10 uh, even while Avengers Infinity War comes out. Now, it, it, it could take a hit, 
right? We could see it drop out of the top 10 once Avengers Infinity War hits. But to be honest, I, I don't think it's going to drop out of the top 10. I think people might pull a double feature day where they go see or like back to back in that same weekend, right? Where maybe Thursday they go see or Friday they go see Black Panther. Then the very next day they get out to the theater and they see Avengers Infinity War. But great job again to everybody at Marvel Studios and everybody involved with Black Panther. You guys made a great film and it's crushing. And then Isle of Dogs, very happy to see that's still in the top 10. It's also in theaters like all over now because when I saw it, my review's up on the channel. Uh, but when I saw it, I had to drive all the way across town to the one theater in my town, which is ridiculous, that had it playing. So now it's it should be in every theater. So you should be able to get out and check this film out really good. It's stop motion animation, but they do a really great job with the lighting. They're doing like just straight black uh, like silhouettes for the foreground, really bright colors in the background and then other things as well. Plus, there's different animation styles in the film, which surprised me because I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was all stop motion animation, but there's actual like other different types of animation kind of peppered throughout the film. Really, really great job overall. And if you're a dog lover like I am, you are definitely going to want to see this on the big screen. Um, I can only imagine. Haven't seen that yet. Tyler Perry's Acrimony. Haven't seen Chappaquiddick. Chappaquiddick was OK. It was OK. Um, my review for that is on the channel as well. If you want to check that out, go for it. Um, you just go to the movie review playlist and you can see that right there. So that is the weekend box office report. It looks like everybody kind of got out and saw what they wanted to see this weekend because there are so many options. You take a movie like Rampage versus Quiet Place versus Truth or Dare versus Blockers and Chappaquiddick, right? These are all very different types of film, very different genres, but there's a little something for everybody in the theaters this weekend or this past weekend. And now we're going to take a look also a little bit later in the show as to what's arriving in theaters this weekend. So there's a lot of options if you're a cinema fan, which I'm assuming you are if you're watching the show, because this movie, this show's about movies. So there you go. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some news stories here. Now, if you're new to the show and you haven't been watching uh, the previous two seasons of Bernanski's vlog, we used to do an honorable mention section. But as you can see uh, down below, we got that little ticker tape run in there, and that ticker tape is all of the honorable mentions this week. So you're going to want to pay attention to that to see kind of just what little things popped off in the news uh, that were interesting, but I didn't really want to dive too deep into. So just check those out as we go through this episode. First story is coming to us from The Hollywood Reporter, and this is with regards to the new Terminator film, the James Cameron uh, reboot that he's doing. We got some new folks coming in here to join Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, these links are in the description box, <clears throat> excuse me, below. So just go ahead and expand that box, and you should be able to follow along with us in these articles as we go through them. So we got Colombian actress Natalie Reyes. We have uh, Gabriel Luna. And we also have Diego Benetto joining Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger for the new Terminator film. Now, I'm not overly familiar with these actors, uh, so I can't really speak to like what I've seen them do. Uh, I know that uh, Gabriel Luna did Ghost Rider on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. I stopped watching that show a long time ago. Like it just went way left. This is before the Inhumans, the whole thing with the Inhumans took off. So that was like, I don't know, season two or whatever. So I haven't been watching for a while, but I know he was on that show, but I'm not overly familiar with their work. So what I see from this is that they're really trying to establish a brand new kind of feel for the Terminator franchise, right? They're trying to bring in young talent that can maybe build out the franchise. We don't know, right? We'll have to wait and see kind of how well Terminator does on if we're going to get additional sequels with these cast members. But what it looks like is it looks like James Cameron is trying to set up a brand new world that he can build off of with young talent that might be around for the long haul, which is always nice if you're trying to continue the franchise life. So I'm pretty excited to kind of see what they're going to do with these characters. Now, in the article, it talks about how uh, Natalie Reyes is going to be playing the character of Danny. And she comes from a working class neighborhood in Mexico City, and she finds herself in the battle between humans and machines. So it looks like she's going to be the main protagonist of this film. So curious to see kind of like what her role is going to be, how it's going to play out. I know we've had something similar with the last uh, Transformers movie where we had kind of a female lead right there along with Mark Wahlberg and kind of watching that play out on the big screen and how it looked and everything else. 
Uh, the movie itself wasn't good, but I thought the the girl who was in that film with Mark Wahlberg, I thought they did a good job considering the material that they had. So curious to see what this film is going to look like. Curious to see kind of the tone and everything else with James Cameron coming back, Arnold Schwarzenegger coming back, Linda Hamilton coming back. So it should be really good. I like the fact that they've got young faces in here, and that gives me hope that if the film is good, we can actually see this franchise carry on and get some legs in a positive direction versus kind of what happened in the last couple films. So whew, fingers crossed. Hopefully it pays off. Looking forward to that first trailer for sure. All right. Next article, more casting news comes to us from Variety. And this is with regards to Disney's live action Mulong. Now we have uh, Gong Li. We've got Jet Li. We have uh, we also had Donnie Yen. These are all new characters cast in the live action Mulan film. Now I'm getting pretty excited for this. Um, I it's it sounds like it could be a really great live action version with some really cool martial arts sequences. Now, if you remember the animated film Mulan with the musical aspect and everything like that, there's some good training montages in it. Uh, the whole "I'm going to make a man out of you" training montage. Then you got the end fight scenes and everything else. So I'm hoping this shapes up really nicely. So far, it looks like they're doing a great job with the cast. I really like uh, Jet Li. I really like Donnie Yen. Not overly familiar with Gong Li. I'd have to do some research and see if she's been in roles that I'm familiar with, but just offhand trying to get everything squared away with the technical issues kind of threw me off. But uh, so far, I like kind of where they're going with this. And I like the fact that they're bringing people in who know martial arts. So that leads me to believe that we might get a really good martial arts style Mulan live action. Uh, it might be a little bit more like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, hopefully like with the color schemes and everything else, how vibrant that film is. Uh, but it, it looks like it's setting up really nicely for something that could be a lot of fun and have some really great action sequences as well. So fingers crossed for this one. I know they're trying to pull in uh, a large a large amount of actors and everything else that are of Asian descent to really give it some life and to give it some credibility to make it as believable as possible considering where it takes place. And I think that's super awesome. So hopefully that they continue to cast as well as they already have, which I'm sure they will because it's Disney. And then we have something exciting to look forward to with live action Mulan. All right. Next article is coming to us from Deadline. And this is a little bit older. This came back a little bit last week, but I thought it was interesting because I didn't realize this was a thing. So I just wanted to talk about it real quick. SAG-AFTRA, uh, they came out with an announcement that they're banning auditions in hotel rooms and residences. I didn't really know that was a thing. Like you have a meeting at someone's house, I get, but I didn't realize that there was like, you know, you have like auditions and stuff like that. I thought that was weird. But with regards to everything that's happening in the culture with Hollywood and stuff like that, they wanted to try and implement something to make the actors and actresses feel safe with regards to auditions so that no one will get taken advantage of. And I think that's really cool. So I was really happy to see that uh, they are taking the steps proactively to say like, hey, look. We can't be doing that because when I read that, I was like, why would why would you that just seems weird? Like to me personally, I was like, if someone was like, hey, I've got this audition and I want you to come read a script for it. Like, OK, cool. Where like I'm going to be at the La Quinta room 205. It'd be like, uh, I won't be there. Like, <laughs> That's not nope. That's weird. Uh, so I didn't realize that this was like a common thing that happened. Uh, so kind of weird. But hey. It's nice that they're taking proactive steps to be like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore because I think that's kind of smart anyway. And there's also stuff in the article that talks about how they're going to implement, like try and do like a buddy system if you have to go somewhere to like, you know, take a buddy with you, which is also smart. So really cool thing. Check it out. They give some guideline perspective on it and stuff like that. So I think it's a good step in the right direction to make sure that people are safe, which is super important. So Check that out. Again, that is going to be in the description box below. Just go ahead and click on that. That would be the deadline article for SAG-AFTRA. All right, so we are going to go ahead and move now into the movie review segment. If you have any thoughts about the topics that we just covered uh, for the news, or if you have any comments or thoughts about anything that's rolling through the honorable mention ticker tape, down below. Go ahead and leave those comments in the comments section and get that conversation started. But we're going to go ahead and move now into the movie review segment here where we're going to take a look at two films again that I saw were Beirut and Rampage, two very different films. So go ahead and stay tuned and stick close for those reviews because they're coming at you right now. What was once a thriving tourist destination is now a war zone. Christian militias, Israeli, U.S., French, and Syrian troops are all inhabiting a land that is currently being torn apart from within. 
The city is barely recognizable to those who were fortunate enough to enjoy it pre the 1982 Lebanon war. And because of all of this turmoil, one man is brought in to negotiate the release of one man between these three separate groups who also turns out to be an old friend. So, does Beirut deliver on the emotional intensity and drama we would expect from a film about negotiating during wartime? Or did the negotiations fall apart? Let's talk about it in this review. The movie captures and delivers on what I believe it's set out to capture and deliver upon. A broken man who rediscovers his worth and ultimately saves his friend. At the heart of this tale, we examine the life of Mason Skiles, played by John Hamm, who has suffered tremendous loss, is completely broken, and barely holding on. From there, he's called back into action to negotiate and save his friend from a small terrorist organization who it turns out his character actually has ties to. This movie deals with the struggle and the war going on in Beirut, absolutely, but that war and those battles only help to elevate the tension and the stress that we experience with this character of Mason Skiles as he's trying to negotiate the release of his friend between three separate groups. And because of that, this feels like a hero's journey about rebirth and overcoming and conquering your personal demons. This film also does a great job of highlighting how volatile the area is that the story takes place in. It also shows us that even in the midst of war, life still goes on, as it always does. We get to see people watching TV as the war rages on around them. We even get to see a newlywed couple taking their wedding photos surrounded by debris and rubble from bombings that occurred earlier before their wedding. It also shows the military and militia presence throughout the area and how one wrong turn might be a bad decision and could also cost you your life. And it's these little touches that they peppered throughout the film that really made it feel three-dimensional and fully formed. The world this film creates did truly feel believable because of the circumstances the individuals are in within all of these warring areas. And while Skiles, again played by John Hamm, is trying to negotiate between all the different groups, there are nice little subplots happening with each group. Again, really forming out this world, making it feel three-dimensional, so it looks at all of the different groups, what are their motivations, what are they interested in, and how is Skiles going to negotiate the release of his friend between all of these different groups who are either completely at ends or they're just not seeing eye to eye. Again, driving the point that this film is all about Skiles and his journey. Again, the hero's journey. He has a lot of negotiating to do. For example, how is he going to convince the Israelis to release a terrorist that they're holding who is responsible for the death of so many Jews? And as an American, Skiles still has to deal with the US government and their agencies. And he has to figure out how he's going to convince them, even though they called for him, to let him do his job without them running their own plans beneath and behind him, which would actually put his at risk and could possibly kill his friend who he's trying to negotiate the release for. And how is he going to convince the Muslim terrorists to release his friend once they have the man that they are looking to get from the Israeli forces? And if he can get the man they're requesting, how is he going to be able to deliver that man to them safely by navigating around the Christian and Syrian troops in the area? There's so much involved in this story, and I do believe that they paid enough attention to each of these subplots, again, to really flesh it out and make it feel real and three-dimensional. Beirut is playing at your local movie theater right now. I enjoyed this film more than I thought I would, and I'm going to recommend a big screen viewing if you're the type of person who, like me, enjoys movies about history or historical movies. There is a difference. This is a political thriller, as well as the hero's journey about overcoming yourself and your personal demons to eventually be who you're destined to become. The story is well told, and all of the actors in this film did a good job delivering on these characters to make everything feel believable, and again, three-dimensional. However, there were a few little points throughout the film that deal with Sky's personal life that I felt they focused a little bit too much on, which really didn't do much for the story. And so because of that, Beirut is only getting one high five from this guy. Beirut is playing at your local movie theater right now. Check it out. The year is 1986, and America is falling in love with an arcade game that allows the user to control a monster that destroys cities, eats people, and crushes the military. Flash forward to present, and it's 2018, and America is falling in love with a movie about an arcade game from 1986, starring arguably the last modern action movie star. So. 
does Rampage deliver on the exciting tale of monsters wrecking mayhem in downtown Chicago? Or should we send these monsters back to the lab for further testing? Let's talk about it in this review. The movie begins in outer space where a genetically altered rat is destroying a space station. Yep, and that's basically everything you need to know about this movie. It starts with something absurd and then continues its popcorn munching movie madness to climax. The writing in this film truly did make it feel like they were really trying to create something believable, create characters with heart, while all of this madness and craziness with monsters destroying Chicago was taking place on the big screen. And for that, I actually did enjoy the writing aspect of this film. However, even though the monsters are trying to destroy humanity, they also kind of aren't. One could argue that the monsters would eventually get around to destroying everything going on in the world and destroying humanity. However, in this film, they mostly keep to themselves kind of in the areas where they exist until a frequency is sent out from the tower in Chicago where they were created, which calls them back to Chicago. Now let's go ahead and add the brother and sister combo who run the testing facility, who run the corporation, who are a bit of business moguls, meets mad scientists, meets war profiteers, there's a lot going on in this family. And then we're going to add an ex-employee of theirs who has a personal vendetta against them. And then we're going to add a cowboy who is also kind of like NSA meets CIA meets military intelligence. And then to top it all off, we're gonna add monsters and most importantly, The Rock. In short, this movie felt like a Saturday morning cartoon from the 1980s that I used to watch, brought to life on the big screen. So fun, but now let's talk visuals. When we see a trailer for a film, we understand that this is just an advertisement and not everything is done as far as special effects and poster concern. So when we go to see the movie, we have an expectation that what we saw in the trailer will actually look better in the final product because of all the time that they've had to put the final touches on it and post, really bringing everything to life. The trailer is an advertisement for something that's not yet finished, so we have something to look forward to once it's finished. However, the final product of Rampage looked way too similar to the trailers as far as CGI and special effects are concerned, which was a bit of a bummer. That's not to say that all the visual effects and visual styling did not work for me in this film. There were two instances that really stuck out that I particularly enjoyed. In the video game, you can eat the humans as they're trying to escape the buildings that you're destroying as the monster. Particularly, it's always a woman in a red dress. In this film, a woman in a red dress actually gets eaten by the gorilla, which was pretty great. Also, in the game, as the monster destroying buildings, you get to see people leaping out of the buildings trying to escape your mayhem. In this film, Dwayne The Rock Johnson literally jumps out of a building trying to escape the monster mayhem that's happening. Also, pretty great. But overall though, again, I was a little disappointed in the overall final product and how it looked because it looked a little bit too much like the trailers, which means it didn't really look as polished as I would have hoped. But again, this felt like a Saturday morning cartoon from the 80s brought to life on the big screen, which was fun. Rampage is playing at your local movie theater right now. This film is the definition of a popcorn nonsense action flick that's just so much fun, reminding us of those great action nonsense films from the late 90s, early 2000s. It has monsters. It has over-the-top action sequences. It has plenty of explosions. It has basically the entire downtown city of Chicago destroyed by monsters, and it even has a few sex jokes peppered throughout the film. This movie epitomizes the infamous slogan, movies for guys who like movies. However, and unfortunately, this film does not sell me enough to recommend that you guys get out of your house and spend your time, and more importantly, your hard-earned dollars on a big screen viewing of this film. I will recommend that you check it out once it's available on DVD and Blu-ray or your preferred streaming service. And because of that, it's getting at least one high five from this guy. If you'd like to watch a rock movie because you're a fan of his films, just like me, I will recommend you check out Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle now that it's available on DVD and Blu-ray. Rampage is playing at your local movie theater right now. Check it out. All right, we are back and we are ready to wrap this show up. But before we go, we've got a couple things we still need to talk about here. We still are going to take a look at what's arriving in theaters this week. What's arriving on DVD and Blu-ray this week. Also certified rad. So let's go ahead now and cut to this real quick little splash page I just threw together to take a look at what's arriving at your local theater this week. 
All right, this week in theaters, we have Super Troopers 2, I Feel Pretty, Traffic, and the Disney movie Dolphins. So there you go. Those four movies hitting theaters this week. Uh, out of these four films, I would say the one that I'm most excited about to see is Super Troopers 2. I think that film is long overdue. I really enjoyed Super Troopers. In fact, I still quote that movie regularly. It's just a lot of fun. It's a reverent fun, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, still some great lines. Uh, meow. So hopefully you guys have seen Troop Super Troopers. If you haven't, definitely recommend checking that out before you see Super Troopers, too, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of jokes that tie back into Super Troopers, so especially with Farva and his leaders of Cola. So definitely going to want to check that out. Um, as far as the other ones are concerned, Dolphins may be cool if you like documentaries. I'm sure Disney is going to do a great job with that. Uh, I'm similar. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be something. So I haven't seen the trailer, but I'm assuming it's going to be something similar, like the, what the nature channel does with like the world and stuff like that and nature and all that, like super high def IMAX, um, like style. So check it out if you're into the nature stuff and then traffic and I feel pretty, uh, both films coming out that are very different. Uh, traffic looks like it's going to be a kind of like a survival tale as far as like that couple that like goes on the camping retreat to the cabin. And then craziness ensues with a bunch of like nutso biker uh, truck driver people. So there, that could be fun. And then I feel pretty. Uh, the trailers really haven't sold me too much. I did like the concept of owning who you are, embracing who you are, loving yourself, and then just taking that confidence and strutting out into the world. I like that concept a lot. I support that. But as far as like the comedy and everything else in the trailers, it didn't really sell me. So if you're excited about it, go ahead and sound off below and let me know why. And uh, maybe you can convince me that that should be a film I should see this weekend. So let's go ahead and take a look next at what is arriving on DVD and Blu-ray for your home theater this weekend. All right, on DVD and Blu-ray, we've got The Commuter, The Only Living Boy in New York, The Post, and Humor Me. So we've got uh, action, and then I believe drama, drama, comedy. So there you go with that. Uh, as far as these films go, the one I'm most excited to see is Humor Me. I saw the trailer for that. I really enjoyed the trailer. Both of these guys, Elliot Gould and Jermaine Clement, Clemente, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, both great actors, uh, Jermaine, obviously from Flight of the Concords, what we do in the shadows, etc. Both of these guys playing father and son looked really good. I liked the trailer, so I'm excited to see this now that it's available on DVD and Blu-ray. The commuter I saw, I think people might see this and enjoy this more now that it's on DVD and Blu-ray. For my review, you can just go back and check out my review in the movie review playlist with the post as well, because I enjoyed that film. Uh, it, I don't, I don't think it's probably one of Steven Spielberg's best films but still enjoyable and still worth checking out for sure. So if you're excited about any of those films, go ahead and sound off below in the comments section and let me know which ones and why. And now we're going to go ahead and move into the last segment, which is Certified Rad. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, again, this article is in the description box below. So just go ahead and expand that box, click on the link, and that'll take you right to the article. Because today we're going to be talking about a Texas couple who started a food truck to feed the homeless. So in 2005, and again, this is all in the article. In 2005, Joan Cheever of San Antonio, Texas, became inspired to help the homeless after she realized her preteen children were complaining too much about what they wanted and needed. So she saw this as not only a teaching opportunity, but an opportunity to help. So she told her family, we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to feed the homeless and show our kids what needy people really look like and kind of teach them a lesson about life. So if you go through the article, it talks about how she gets donations and how her and her husband bought a truck and then everything kind of moved forward from there. Uh, and she still, to this day, delivers this food and helps the people in need in the area. Uh, now she's 60 years old. She's a former journalist, uh, and she's been working this nonprofit food truck for, according to the article, about 12 years. So when you can step outside of the box and you see an opportunity to help people in need, as well as kind of teach your family or teach your kids or whatever about what it means to give back to and service the community, et cetera. And then you do that for as long as she's been doing it over a decade now, you can guarantee that that is certified rad. So check that article out and uh, great, great work to the Cheevers on 12 years of contributing and helping the community and the homeless and the people in need in your area in San Antonio. Super awesome. 
All right, guys, that wraps up this week's brand new episode. We had a way late start, right, because of all the technical issues with the Internet. But we're up and running. We are rocking and rolling. And we got through this week's brand new show. I feel like without a hitch, once all the hitches were taken care of. Right. So thank you guys so much for enjoying this week's episode. Thank you to everybody who gave me the thumbs up, because, again, the thumbs up helps people who like movie related shows find this movie related show right here on YouTube. Also, thank you to everybody who's watching this either live or on replay. Appreciate you guys. Lastly, don't forget to click that subscribe button because every Monday at 10 a.m. PST, we drop a brand new episode right here on YouTube for Bernanski's vlog. And then click that bell so you get the notifications as well when new content drops on the channel. All right, everybody. Thank you guys again so much. I'm Jeremy Bernanski. Sorry again about all of the technical complications this morning but still able to get the show up and get everything taken care of and talk movies with you today. Have a great week. We'll see you next Monday. Hopefully you're able to get out to the theaters to check out all these great films that are in theaters right now. And next week, Avengers Infinity War. Let's get excited, people. We are just a week away, almost, almost a week away, almost a week away from 10 years of filmmaking coming to fruition on the big screen. Cannot wait to see Avengers Infinity War. So let's get excited. We will see you next Monday at 10 a.m. PST on YouTube. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter as well as Stardust. And as always, we will see you guys bright and early next Monday morning, 10 a.m. PST, assuming the internet works. (laughs) All right, take care, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye.